already got you prayed in. We're going to hit the ground running today. There's always more room uh, for you guys in here. But give us a big amen. Let them know that we got a crowd in the house today. Amen. amen. That's good, man. I tell you, it's just so excited to get together each week and, and just share and the different opportunities that we have to get together with one another, to share about the things of God. Isn't that a powerful time? I don't know about you. This is my favorite time of the week, the favorite time. Because I get to see you guys and we get to talk about my favorite person, Jesus. But it's not just limited to here. You know, like we said, we try to meet most uh, every Tuesday night, different things like that. But I want to encourage each of you guys, and, and I'm preaching to me too, as we go through this understanding our seasons of life. You've got to take time each day to grow in the Lord. Amen. It's a relationship, and relationships take time, so it's an investment there. But I, I was thinking as the Lord was giving me this uh, message this week, I, I want to go ahead and give you a little background. A lot of the things that I pulled from this was a, a devotion time that I did a couple of weeks ago, and I just thought, man, this is really where we are. You know, there's a lot of stuff going on in the world, a lot of stuff going on in our life, a lot of stuff going on in our church family. How do we equip ourselves when we're in different seasons of life? And that's what I pray we can do today as we go through the a book of Ecclesiastes and uh, chapter 3. We're just going to take really three uh, good verses right out in the shoot, but I want to share a few other things. Have you ever noticed that you can learn a lot from some of your poor decisions you know, you, you can't. That's just the truth of it. And we can learn a lot from good decisions as well. But as we go through life and we make some of those decisions, and I know for me, a lot of those decisions did not uh, have God in them at all, is, is what Buddy wanted to do, what I think, and all this. And so many times I see where, wow, if I'd have just waited a little bit longer, or if I'd have just asked the Lord, if I'd have just prayed about it, if I'd have got some godly counsel, you know, when I look back through my life, I probably wouldn't have chose some of those things. And even in the midst of that, God's love and grace is so good that he loves us too much to leave us there. Yeah, we sometimes have the scar tissue from bad, bad uh, you know, mistakes and things like that. But there's things that God can show us in those moments that we probably would never learn any other way. I'm just speaking for me. Does that, that resonate with anybody? There's things that you've learned going down the wrong path or a tough path that you probably would have never experienced had you not went down there. Does that mean you want to run and jump in a ditch and go, look? No. But I'm going to say this. Anytime that we've got stuff going on, we need to put it before the Lord. So I, I want to go ahead and talk a little bit about this. So um, a lot of you guys have heard this many times. A lot of times you hear these verses at a funeral. But today we're going to be using these verses, the first three verses, about life. About life. I want us to, to get geared up and be ready to roll in every season of our, of our life. And so when I was looking through the, the book of Ecclesiastes, it actually means gatherer. Preacher or teacher, and we're talking about the guy that wrote this, they say was the wisest man that ever walked the earth besides Jesus, okay? And as we look at this, he's King Solomon, but it's, he's David, King David's son, so everybody's with me. And then he just, this guy had it going on. You know, in the midst of this whole thing, when he was getting ready to become king, I thought it was just, this is really cool when you see somebody's heart. When the Lord uh, asked him, what, what, what do you want from me? He goes, man, I need long life. Hey, I, I need a lot more money. I need some gold and silver. But he asked the Lord to give him wisdom to counsel his people. And to me, that says a lot about this man's heart. But also, we've got to be careful the company keeps. Somebody say amen. And the Lord had shown him so many things. And people would come from around the world to say, you know, it's probably, yeah, I hear a lot of talk about this. Right? We hear a lot of talk and a lot of chatter about different things in the world and in our life. But we turn around and say, I want to see it for myself. Does your life look so enticing to others? They want to know Jesus. They want to know, man, how is he dealing with this when he's going through this situation? How, how are they dealing with this, you know, in this world? How, how are they walking through this? I pray that our life make people jealous for Jesus, amen? That I really do. And, and you know what? Some days we, we respond better than others, but we got to keep feeding on the Word of God. we got to keep feeding on the Word of God each and every day. So with that being said, I'm going to go in here and talk about how we need someone to help us to navigate through this life, amen? And his name is Jesus. I want to, I want to share a couple things here. Somebody had in my notes. I said, you know, time we have, the time that we have is our gift from God. And I wrote down here, I said, it's a gift that we have been entrusted with and to be wise with it, not to waste it. You know, and I'll probably talk about it. You know, you can store up money. You can store up groceries. 
You can store up a lot of things. You cannot store up time. So today, as we go through this and look at the different seasons of our life, are we making the most of every opportunity as we go through? You know, many of y'all know I got me a new puppy, right? I didn't know she was really a puppy, but a year old, I'm going to say that's still a puppy. She likes, she likes Billy Graham. She does. <laughs> she likes Billy Graham. She likes food. She likes everything. She likes to go. And as I was walking her yesterday, as she was dragging me yesterday, <laughs> and I'm thinking, you know, man, when is this dog going to slow down? When is this dog going to slow down? And I got to thinking about pets I've had over time, you know. And, and I thought, you know, you better enjoy this time because pretty soon she's going to slow down different things happen in our life pretty soon maybe I won't be able to keep up with her and I started thinking about that and, and, and so again once again dog the, the, the dog is being my, my my helper here the Lord is using this animal that he's blessed me with to teach me more things I believe that there's a sermon everywhere every way in your life if you take time to look at it and so I'm looking I said you know what okay well you know okay she's one year old if she lives to 14 Okay, that's 13 more years. I'm 57. That's 60. I'm going to be 70 years old scooping dog poop behind this dog. This is a long time. I'm just saying, you know, I'm sort of thinking about that. I just, this is a long, it's a commitment. It's a long time. This, what's, what's going on? But they bring us so much joy, right? And we're starting looking at different things. And I know I get a little sidetracked on something, but I'm just telling you how God starts working in my life in the simple things. The simple things, you know? I could, I could think about in my life when I could run and jump and do this and everything else. And now I don't jump quite as high. I don't run quite as far. So I always get a good seat at the buffet so I don't have to go so far. I, just, I, just, I, can, just, I can just jump up there and get the crab legs, you know. I ain't going to be running. But all that put aside is, I, I, I believe this. Let me just share this. We are serious about the Word of God. But I believe that you can be yourself, and I believe that you can have a good time as you're studying the Word of God. Because there's going to be enough seasons in your life that's going to be difficult. There's going to be enough seasons in your life that are tough. So you know what? Sometimes I like to joke a little bit to get your guard down so we can get the seed of the gospel message in your heart. God's Word will never come back void, and we're going to preach and teach that today. So I'm going to go ahead. If you got your Bibles with you today, I'm going to ask you to turn to the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3. I'm going to go into the next slide and just read these uh, three pieces here, okay? And so, like I said, you usually hear this at, at funerals, and, but I, I'm telling you, this is an urgency for our life today. And I want us to take a good look at this and take a good inventory of what God has blessed us with. It says, to everything there is a season. You say, yeah, buddy, we know that. Do we? Because sometimes in the season that we're we go, when's it going to stop? I don't want to play no more. God says, I'm working things out in this deal. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get you through the other side. But take a look at this. It says, to everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven. I want you to look at this right here. This is what jumps out when I'm studying this and praying. There's a purpose. I'm not saying God causes bad things, but when, when bad things do happen, there's a purpose that we can learn something from that. There's something that we can take away. There's things in people in this room, side to side, and everywhere else, and people online that have been through some stuff. And, and then when, when, when your time comes and something like that, they have the ability through the power of God and the Holy Spirit drink, driving them through that, bringing them through that, to speak into your life words of wisdom that they would have never had before had they not walked in some of these things. You know what I mean? It, it doesn't take long. Everybody can take that snapshot. If you just think for just five seconds in your life of something difficult that you went through. It doesn't have to be more difficult than this guy's or this, this person or this lady. But that, that thing, and there's many in our life because that's life. That, boom, wow, I remember that. I don't know about you, but there's times that, that I've been through different things in my life. And then when I see somebody else going through that, or if I see the train wreck coming, I must say, hey, man, um, this is not good. This is not good. Well, who do you think you are? I'm a guy that already went down that road. Just thought I'd offer you a little something here. Pump the brakes. Or just encourage them, right? Look at this, verse 2. A time to be born, a time to die. A time to plant, and a time to pluck up that which is planted. And all the gardeners going here, yeah, yeah, I got it. Now this gets a little tricky here, but we're going to talk about all this. I'm going to read this, and we'll go back to it. A time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, and a time to build up. I think some of those bad habits need to be killed off in our life. How about you? What, what type of seeds are we planting 
And, and I just want to set the stage from, from right here. We're going to kind of work with these three verses. And we've got some other ones that we're going to bring in. But I want you to hear today that regardless of what season you're in, it's going to be okay. Whatever season you're going to be in, it, it, God has not left you. It may feel like that. Anybody ever felt abandoned? That's a terrible feeling. Now let me just jump back to here. You know what hell's going to be like? I can tell you one little piece of it real fast. You will not have the presence of God. You will be abandoned. Right? I can't even imagine that. I can't even imagine that. Right? But we got the promise of Jesus Christ. And when we put our faith and trust in the finished work of the cross, we turn from our sin and believe on him. God said, I will set you in a family. No man can snatch you out of the Father's hand. See, if, if, if our salvation required for us to hold it, right, we'd lose it. We'd mess it up. But we are sealed with the Spirit of God to the day he comes back. Amen. That's something to get excited about. When you have a bad day, say, thank you, Lord. You know what, Lord, I need to make some adjustments in here. This is a very difficult season, Lord, but thank you, God, you didn't leave me. Lord, please bring people in my life to encourage The church is an important piece of the, the puzzle, amen? I'm going to tell you what, I say this all the time, and God rest her soul, Miss Karen, I tell you, I miss her all the time. And we would have our conversations, and she would say, honey, how do people go through things in life without knowing the Lord? Most every conversation we had, that would come up because she was always counting her blessings because she went through difficult stuff. And we all go through difficult stuff. But she knew her hope was in Christ. Even in crisis, we have hope in Christ. Amen. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So as we walk through this, we need to identify the season that we're in. Right. Let's take a look at this. How many people remember the Coliseum Mall? Yeah. Yeah. Do y'all remember that? When you look through there, and, and we go through there, and we go, well, where, where is the foot locker, you know, for the new shoes or something like that, or where are we at? And you would go in that little kiosk thing, and it said, you are here. Do you remember that X? And I said, oh, I'm here. Well, man, we got to go over there. Oh, then we got to go back over here. It's real important to know where you are, right? Or if not, you're going to be wandering all over the place. That's what I'm saying. Identify the season that you're in. Let's take a look at this. Now, before I get really going here, I'm going to get a little drink of water because I'd love to hear you say amen. amen. You guys are great. You guys are great. Wouldn't it be kind of crazy when we're talking about different seasons and farming and things like that? We're going to get into that. Wouldn't it be crazy to try to harvest everything you plant in the winter, in the summer, in the summer, in the fall, in the winter, in the spring? Just constant harvesting. He said, well, you need to give it the time, the seed time to germinate. You're not, you know, you're not even letting it get out of the ground. But see, that's how we live life sometimes. It's not fast enough, man. It's, and when we get into a problem mode, we really want it fast, right? We, man, we got to move. We got to move. We got to keep going, right? I believe we need to be about God's business. But what I'm telling you today, that in the, the middle of these seasons, God is doing something in us. Amen? If you look back through the Bible, we talked a little bit about it. Most anybody that God used throughout the Bible time, they went through a difficult time. Think about Joseph. There was a lot of stuff going on in that man's life from the pit to the palace. A lot of stuff. Think about that. You know, we talked about different things with, with, with maybe when we even go back and look at uh, Moses. Here's a guy, man, he didn't like to speak. He didn't have things going on in that aspect. But God had placed him in, in such an area for a time such as this. Don't think, don't think if you're watching this, don't think if you're here that, that you're here by mistake. God has, has got this thing figured out. I'm so glad to have you with us. But I'm telling you what, God has got something for each of us everywhere, every day where we are. He knows where you are, you know. Let's keep on going. I said, if we want to identify our season that we're in, we need to spend time with God to identify that. How am I going to know what's going on if I, I won't spend time with God? So, you know, I look at this, I said, so, so wherever you're at, every season has a purpose. Life's got its ebbs and flows. It's got its ups and downs. But you can't live in the harvest season all the time. That might be a good thing to write down. We always, man, I, I, I want to be making money. I want to be doing this. I want, I want to be learning. I want to be doing this. There's a time that things have to kind of set up. You ever glued something? You don't glue it and go, I can't believe this is not working. It takes some setup time. You know, you turn around and maybe you paint something. You go, oh, that's great. 
It takes some setup time. You're going to get it all on your feet and on your hands. It takes some time to dry and soak in, right? The Word of God sometimes takes a little time to soak in. The things that are going on, sometimes our prayers, it's not so much changing the mind of God, it's changing us to line up with the things of God, amen? That's the deal. But when we spend time with God, it helps us identify where we are and what's going on. I, I want to say this real quick. I'm going to be very honest with you. There's things in my life that I thought I dealt with before, and then something comes up and I go, maybe you didn't deal with that real good. Has that ever happened to y'all? It's like, man, I, that, that doesn't bug me no more. That doesn't, you know, I'm good. That's cool. And all of a sudden, it's like, Grr! man, who is that guy? Only guy, right? Only person, right? I'm going to pray for you, Pastor. How about that? But I mean, you're like, where did that come from? You know, we've got to constantly keep our feet to the fire, constantly keep asking God, help me in these areas of my life. If there's a difficult spot in your life, man, God is faithful to continue to work with us in that. But I say this, I'll put it this way, if you want to know the master plan, you've got to spend time with the master. And guess what? You will never come up short spending more time with God. Have you ever done this? You get on your phone, we talked about this before, and you say, well, it happened to me today. I was going to send somebody a text, and then something came up, and there was something else, and it was like a doggy training toy. And I was like, God, I'd probably need that. And I, was, and, I, and I told Tyler, I said, what was I going to do? She said, you were going to send that guy an email. I was like, oh, yeah. It's just those little things, little things pull you over like that. And the next thing you know, you, you've invested five minutes, ten minutes, an hour, all these things. What happens if we, and he probably, they probably got this, is that when you get on your phone and say about three minutes in, he goes, Boop, read a Bible verse. Maybe we need to make, Tim, we ought to make one of those. Yeah. I mean, as things go by, just, boop. just have one pop up. I know they do from time to time in the morning, but just like every so often to, to recenter us, to recenter us on that. But you know what? We got to spend time with God. You know what? I'm going to say it this way. We get to spend time with God. I tell you every week, Nick's sending me something. Well, man, we only got like six more days till we get to church. Now, he's having church the whole time. What was it yesterday? Seven hours and 45 minutes, man. Yeah. yeah. He, I mean, he's counting down and he just got a smiley face. I love you, man. I'm going to be there in just you know, a certain amount of time. He's counting this down because he's anticipating God doing something here. Right? Because he's been praying all week. I know you guys have too, right? Mm -hmm. yes. Woo! I like that. Yeah, I was going to say, well, we're going to start now, right? Yeah. But you know what? How often do we prepare our heart? How often do we prepare for the service? Think about that. When you think, you say, man, I can't wait. Or do we say, man, I wonder, you know what, did he talk about that last week? Or we say, man, I can't wait. I got a funny feeling if I pray for Buddy and he gets out of the way, God's going to show him and do something amazing. And you know what, I'm willing to get out of the way. Because I don't want you to have my best, I want you to have God's best. I just want to be that conduit, man. That's, that's what I, that is my heart. That is my desire, that I can get a front row seat to seeing God work in your life. How about that? Let's keep on moving. So we've got to take time in our current season to grow where you are planted. What do you mean by that? We're so busy getting out of where we are that we're not understanding what God is trying to show us where we're at. Did that come out right? Oh, I got to go. 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 And it's like maybe God's trying to show you something. Maybe the reason you haven't, I don't know. I'm just going to throw out a few things. Maybe the reason you haven't got the promotion that you think you should have is because God is teaching you how to handle it right here. Maybe, maybe the one that you're looking for, the husband, wife, or what, husband, and uh, yeah, wife, and everything else, and you're looking and saying, well, where are they? Maybe God's preparing their heart to deal with you. How about that? How about that? Could very well be so. But I could tell you one thing. God doesn't waste time. God gives us time as a gift. And to be honest, I probably waste a lot of time, and that really bugs me. People say, man, why don't you just sit down? I was like, man, I don't know how much time I got. I mean, I got to be doing something. I'm not trying to work my way to heaven. I'm just saying, I want to be all about it while I'm here. I want to be about it, man. And my dog is helping me with that. We get about three hours sleep at our house. Woohoo! Yeah! You want to pray? <laughs> yes! Thank you. Lay down, God, please. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm trying to learn in these seasons. What is God showing you in this season of your life? Do you know what season you're in? 
I'm going to tell you what, the seasons click by. I have, I have a really cool uh, opportunity as a pastor because I talk to young folks. I talk to aging folks. I talk to people on their deathbed. I talk to people that just get married and, and you know, expecting their first kid. They're buying their first house. All these things, man, it's just coming down the pipe. And I go, man, I remember that in my life. Man, I remember, remember that. You know, y'all remember this when you're, when you're a little bit younger and you go, take some time with those kids. They'll be gone for you. Know? And you go, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not changing diapers, man. I'm telling you, this is long. And then the next thing you know, they're changing your diaper because time went so fast. Right? I'm just saying, things go by. Things keep going by. But what I've tried to do is, how can I be vigilant about seeking the Lord and be effective in the things of God and also enjoy the blessings of God. Trying to balance life. Sometimes things get out of balance. You know, you're walking, man, and you're walking on this thing. And you're going and you got, you got a couple different things going on. And then, boom, out of the blue, you're going, I didn't see that coming. I never thought I'd be dealing with this. I can tell you, after ministering pastor for 20-some years now, 25 years or so, I sit down with a lot of people. And I even said this. I just didn't think I would be in this position. I just didn't think that. Now, let me flip that. There's people who say, I can't believe I'm in this position. <laughs> wow, God is full of grace. So it doesn't always have to be negative. The season that you're going through is often necessary to get you to the next level or where God wants to use you effectively. And sometimes, I don't know uh, how they say it, in the King James, it just stinketh. It ain't fun. It's not a picnic. It's like, man, I don't want to play no more. But in that season, maybe something said today, well, you say, man, I know this season's going to change. God, what are you showing me? Instead of, why? Right? Why me? What happens if we say, what, God? What are you showing me during this time? How do you want me to deal with this? Lord, I need you to help me in this situation. Let's keep on rolling. Everybody doing good so far? I said, there's things taking place in your current season that need to be worked out. I learned some stuff through some stuff I went through, haven't you? Oh, man, let me tell you, I'm pretty open book. This is not my first marriage. This is my second marriage. I learned a lot on my first marriage. You got it made now, baby. <laughs> That's my story. I'm sticking to it. I'm going to tell you what. I learned some stuff. I learned some stuff and going, I probably shouldn't do that. You know, tip of the day. When you're waiting for your wife to come out to get in the car, because you always got to wait for him to get in the car. Somebody say, amen, don't let me get out there by myself. <laughs> don't lay on the horn, because it's not going to go good. Also, do not put your car in reverse and say, are you ready yet? And move forward, and move back and forth, and move forward. And then when they open the door, you forget that you're in reverse instead of boom, boom, and you knock her down in the ground. It doesn't look good. And it's a really long ride to the restaurant after that. You almost backed over me. I was like, I thought I was in drive. Well, no wonder you were going back and forth and beating the horn like a lunatic out there, but I want Now, I share some of these things so you can continue to pray for me. That was not Denise. <laughs> See, I learned these things. Now, just say, baby, you ready? Yeah, okay. You walk out first. Say, so you walk out first. Then I grab the door. Then I know she's in there. I won't back over. It's all good. She's just like I'm being nice. I'm thinking, I do not want to knock somebody else down with a car. You know, this is not good. As we look through this, God is working things out for the good. What is it that God's trying to teach you in this particular season? Whether it's a great season, whether it's a difficult season, whatever it is, I promise you, we need to identify that season so that God can use us in a mighty way. Look at this. God orders our lives like he orders the seasons of nature. If you look back, there's some times, man, woo, it's good. I'm going through this. I'm, I'm learning. And then there's some times it's like, man, it just feels like God's so far away from me. Just being very honest with you. Man, where are you? Well, he didn't leave. But there's times in my life I can find myself drifting, right? I'm just being honest. And I don't even try to. But I get stuff going. Do you ever get stuff going? 
and you're working on this and you start doing all these good things and you got this over here and I, I got to do this good thing and you get this timeline and you start filling it up and you're doing this and you turned around and sold out the God thing for the good thing. Do you hear what I said? I don't want to miss the God thing because I'm so busy about the good thing. Does that make any sense right there? Because, oh, I need to do this, I need to do this, I need to do this, I need to do this. And God said, hey, you know, I could probably save you a step if you, you went to me first. Hey, you know what? There's something that I want to teach you today because before you get over here in the, the 11th hour of this situation, you're going to need to know this. You're going to need to know that you're going to need to just hold your tongue a little bit. Went to the store this morning to pick up a few things. I don't know what's going on. I get my stuff up front. I'm going, I mean, I didn't even go to the back of the store. So I go up, and I get in line. And I hear this guy go, I can't believe this guy just got in front of me. And I'm thinking, I know you ain't talking to me. That's what I wanted to say, right? But it's Sunday. So I just said, no. I'm just, <laughs> but I'm just being honest. Like, I said, I know I'm not hearing this, right? I'm sitting there like this, and I'm like, that guy's talking to me. And the first thing I said, I can't believe he said that. I'm going to let him say it again. And I'm sitting there, and I'm sitting there, and the Lord's going, what are you doing? And I was like, hey, man, did, did I get in front of you? No, go here. I said, man, go here. He went, no, I'm good. But the whole time I'm thinking, this flesh is going to say, I wish you would, right? But the truth is, I'm going, what are you doing? Because it's those moments, those quick moments, right? Right? you got to crucify this flesh daily, man. That's what I'm saying. i got to identify my season. Don't get wrapped around the wheel on, I don't care. And I'm thinking, why did I get so mad? I was an hour before church. I'm like, go ahead, dude, come on, whatever. You know, once I got my mind right, but I'm not proud of that, that, that little 15-second spot there. I'm like, that is not good. See, I thought I had already dealt with that. Man, that buck road runs deep, boy. I'm just like, What? Man, I'm not proud of it. But I'm thinking, why in the world? You know, you just go in there and poke them in the eye and go, yeah, well, look, man, let me pray for you. I'm right across the street. Come on over to the service, right? now. that's not going to be the way to invite people. I'm just like, hey, man, I'm sorry I forgot in front of you. And to be honest with you, I'm not even sure that he was talking to me because he had those things in his ears. So I'm really feeling like a dummy now. So I just bought my stuff and went over there and got in the car and repented. I'm like, Lord. I need to identify my season. You see what I'm saying? That's a true story. This is like two hours ago. And I'm like, what's going on? I worked on this thing all this week, last night, everything else. And the minute I go into Dollar General, I need to identify my season. The reason I tell you these things is because I never come off like I got this all down. I'm telling you that I'm holding on to the Lord. I'm telling you, it's a minute-by-minute minute thing. But I'm thankful that God doesn't leave me. Even when, when the first response is not the God response. God is for us, and I need him every second of the day. How about you guys? I think I've got one more thing I want to share with you on this one. Make every season count. Now, I'm going to tell you what. There's times that we're going to grow. There's some times that we need to learn things. But, but I'm going to tell you what. Have you, have you, and I could pull from a lot of old stories and different things. That's just part of life, right? But I don't want to live there. You, you got folks that, that pick something. Say they were a bricklayer. and Every story is the bricklayer story. Or if they're a fireman, everything was that. That's just cool. I mean, I talk about the band stuff, a lot of different things. They're usually, the, usually the reason I refer to stuff like that because I'm absolutely amazed how God, far God has brought me. And I got a long way to go. I'm excited about it, right? But as we go through life and different seasons, are we making the most of them or are we just running through them? I see it with my granddaughter. You know, I, I, on, on my computer at work, there's, she's probably like one. And I'm playing guitar and she's grabbing a guitar. Now she does a little dance and everything and she's... You know, she's got the little karaoke thing. She's working it, man. And I look to the left of that. Let me, let me ask you, do you all have one of these at your desk? I have a ceramic turtle that Thomas made. And he's 30 years old now. That went fast. And 
if I didn't tell you it was a ceramic turtle, you wouldn't know. <laughs> you got one of those. It's just like, why do you keep that? Because it helps me to be mindful. That seemed like yesterday. That seems like yesterday. I remember this. I remember when he gave it to me. Now when he hugs me, he's got a beard. I mean, that was fast, man. That was fast. Different things like that. I remember putting Jesse in that car bed. Always wanted me to start out in the car bed. I, I would probably be 6'1 if I didn't lay in that car bed. I mean, I'm like there laying down like this. And he said, tell me a story, Dad. I'm like, oh, man. Now, I don't know about you guys, but after you tell the three bear, three pigs and the little bear, and I don't even know what it is anymore. <laughs> so I said, you know what? You got to go to sleep. I'm just going to mix all the stories together. So, and he loved them, man. I got the pigs going up to Jack and the Beanstalk. I mean, I got Jack huffing and puffing and blowing, man. I'm telling you, jelly beans over here with little red riding hood. I got it all. And he's going, that's not right. I said, I'm sleepy, man. Just go to sleep. But I'm telling you, and he goes, Dad, tell him again, tell him again. And I was like, and then he wants me to tell the same story the next night. I don't know what it was. You know? And I bring that up because we had some fun, man. We had some fun. To this day, we're just, I just looked over, he's like, yeah, that was pretty good, Dad. Right? I'm investing. Even though these things seem silly, we still made time for what was important. For years and years and years and years and years, I, I'll just tell you this. Never underestimate the time that you spend with your kids, even if you're younger, teaching them about Jesus. Because I'm going to tell you what, they're getting it. They're getting it, man. And if you don't teach them, the world's sure not going to teach them. In that season, when they're moldable, right? How many know when you get about 14, you have to book time with your child, right? And then when they drive, oh, it's all over there. Yeah, that, I mean, they're rolling. Hey, man, hey, what, you want, you want to go get something to eat? Uh, where are you going? you going with me. I'm buying. Why do you care? Right? So you start getting all these debating things. And it's like, dude, I'm just glad you want to go get something to eat. What, how long are you going to be gone? Until we're done. Right? But we get busy. I remember doing that with my dad. Uh, I don't know if I want to go. In those seasons, when I was a younger man, I didn't understand that. As time went by and I've lived through a few seasons, I want to grab hold of that. You see what I'm saying? It's part of being a parent. It's part about showing that love. Now this, I'm just, I'm just saying you, all you guys can insert your, your deal into this, I guarantee you. Do you know how many drum lessons I've set through? I should be Neil Peart from Rush. Do you know how many trumpet lessons I've set? And, and I, I'm gladly do it because it was time with my kids, right? No problem with that. But I'm just telling you, as we get older and we get a certain age and we think we got it figured out, you don't. Just help you real fast. Do you realize the investments that, that has been put in you? Even in orange, I think back the investment that my mom and dad put in me and my sister. Man, I think about my sister so many times. You know, I can't read music or anything like that. My sister would come home from college and take our record player. I guess it goes this way. Yeah, record player. And she would help me learn a lead break to this whole song. She would put it on there. She'd go higher, lower, higher, lower, higher, lower. And I'm trying to figure this out. Man, I never forgot it. Do you know how many hours we did that over and over? Man, I'm thinking, who does that? She just she knew I loved that. And she was trying to help me how she could. Now, she also would do this. She loved gymnastics. And before we were going to eat, I'd have to do like 15 cartwheels. <laughs> no, one more. I want to just eat. I just want to go in. And like, do another one, bud. You can do it. Come on. When you get out, make sure you do this. Stick it. Right? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I'm kind of thinking the same thing. But <laughs> I'm like, I'm not happy with this mode right here. Those seasons, I'm identifying now. And I'm just like, I don't want to play no more. You know? But I probably could do it. My wife is telling me already, do not do a cartwheel in here. <laughs> I think I can still do it. Up here, I can still do it. No. No. I'm almost out of physical therapy. No. <laughs> 
I identify my season as a no. <laughs> you know, we have fun with this slide, but the truth is this. We need to know where we're going. We need to know where we're at if we want to know where we're going. There's a couple of in things in here. I, I, I said, you know, each se season brings its own set of trials and its own set of lessons learned. But are we trying to find the value in each season as we go through? And, and sometimes it's painful. You go, what, what in the world's going on? What are you trying to show me here? Identify your season. And you know, one of the greatest things I find out is, is when I identify my season, it helps me identify my God because he's never left me. Amen, everybody doing good? Next thing I want to talk about is knowing our boundaries. We often say it this way, stay in your lane. That's not a cop-out. That's not saying, no, you just do this and I'll do that. I'm saying there's reasons for this as we go through. I'll talk to you about it. Know your God-given assignment. People say, I don't know what God wants me to do. Keep seeking the Lord. I know that God wants me to preach the gospel. And I know that he allows me to use the guitar to do a few things and everything else. I do not feel called to do administrative stuff. Thank you, Ms. Tanya. <laughs> she keeps things tight. I mean, boom. Denise is like, I, I mean, I, I got gals around me all the time. And I feel like bumper pool. Nope, you're over here. Nope, you're over here. You're over here. And I need that because that is not my gift. It's not my gift. Now, if you say, hey, you got to talk to 1,500 people tomorrow. Oh, what's the subject? Okay. I'm right, going to work Jesus into this. That's good. If they say, hey, do you got all those receipts from last month and this and that? I'm going, they're in my car. And I bring them in, and Tanya's going through all this stuff. And I go, they're there. I promise they're there. Don't mind the chili stain. But I got it. <laughs> and she will go. Man, I'm telling you, she's got them all lined up. Know your God-given assignment. What do you think your assignment is? What do you know your assignment is? You know what? Is it raising your family in a godly home? Is it your, your, your business, uh, you do business and God has, has called you to give back into the marketplace and, and preach Jesus and, and different things to your workers? I don't know. But I can tell you this. You're going to work the best within the, the, the space that God's called you and your gifting. Find your gift. It's not saying you can't do some other stuff and not saying you can't hone in some other gifts. But I will tell you this. Preaching to me. Don't try to do it all. Amen. I found out something a long time ago, way before we start doing this, way before we start doing training. Don't necessarily sign up for something just because nobody else will. If God didn't call you to do that, that might help some, somebody. Don't just say, well, I guess I'll go ahead and do that. Pray about it. Because if not, you just add to the problem. And what happens is you fill the spot that God was working on somebody else's heart to do it that's been called for that. Meanwhile, you jump out there and halfway do it, and then you come out with a shovel lip, and you go, oh, I don't want to do that. Well, then don't do it. Find the thing that God's called you to do, and then give it all you got. Give it all you got, man. You just keep on going. Everybody good so far? Here's something else. Know your load limits. Mmm. How many people have went down the road, and they see a truck? Got, I don't know, four TVs on there, the old ones, right? Bedding on there. Got a bicycle on there. I mean... You're waiting for the, for the music to start. Yeah, we're going down. He's like, what is going on? And then you pull off, and they keep going. You go get some gas, and then you come back on the interstate, and you go, wasn't that a truck? Did it have two or three more bicycles on it? Oh, they're over there. When we went to a mission trip in, uh, I think we were in Utah at the time. Anyway, we're going, and they got, the, I can't remember what it was, a small blue car. Do you remember that? Yeah. And I'm thinking, you are not driving that on the road, right? They got, I'm not even sure they didn't have a piano on the thing. I mean, they had everything, and we're going. And I told Tanya and the others, I said, wait, we're going in to get somebody else. I got to take a picture of this. Nobody's going to believe this. I'm taking a picture of this, and, man, they're driving out there and stuff when they leave. And they was just as happy as if they had good sense. But they didn't have good sense. And see, what happens was they didn't understand their, their load limit, man. And going down the road, and they get up to speed, man, no doubt that thing was going, whoa, whoa, whoa. 
I did that one time. I had an old truck. Now, when you get a truck, boy, when you get your first truck, let me tell you, you, say, you got you a truck. So I needed to go get some rocks for my swimming pool. I ain't paying nobody to bring that over there. I got a truck. I go down to Pembroke Hardware down at Pembroke, uh, whatever it is, uh, pavement and asphalt. You know what I'm talking about there. I pull up there and the guys out there go, what do you need? <laughs> it looked like Clint. Clint, what do you need, boy? I said, I need some rocks, guy. How much you want? I said, I don't know. How much are they? He told me, I said, just fill it up, man. He says, is that your truck? I said, yeah, that's my truck right there. Yeah, right there, right there, that truck right there. I go in, and I look out the window while I'm paying, and this guy's got the bear cat, is that what you call it? Whatever, whatever, bobcat, that's it. Drops that in there, and my truck went, mm! <laughs> And I'm going, dude, what did you do? He said, you wanted this much rock? I didn't know how much rock, how much that was, but I know how much my little red truck did. I go and get in that thing, and I think, well, the wheels aren't, you know, rubbing. I could just make, I just go down Pembroke, got to go back to Buckford, that's good. And I had a clutch on that thing. I was like, hang it. And I'm telling you, this thing was just like, the boing, the boing, boing. <laughs> so I get down Pembroke, right? I go into second gear, and I start doing this. I got a hovercraft. <laughs> I'm going, this is not good. We're not even to the second stoplight. And people are like, me, 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 me. I go, I got a rock on the back. I didn't understand my load limit, man. And then I'm getting all mad. I know that guy's probably going, hey, watch this. Yeah? <laughs> now, let me tell you this. This is what happens at church. I'm doing everything. I got to fix this. I got to do this. I'm doing this over here. I'm running over here and everything else. And, and how are you going to hear what God's saying? Because you're doing the hovercraft. You're all over the place. You're not listening to God. You're too busy yelling at everybody, look what I'm doing. And it's like, well, if you let us do something, you wouldn't have to do all of it. Guess what? Feel free. i let you all do something if you want, right? <laughs> Whatever you want to do. But that whole thing, when I think about that, I didn't understand the weight, the magnitude of what this guy was going to put on me. A lot of times we don't understand the weight and the magnitude of what the enemy wants to heap on your plate. And next thing you know, I got it. I could do it. Look at me. And the next thing you know, you're going, oh, I can't take no more. Know your boundaries. Know the season. And it's not a bad thing to lighten the load. Everybody good on that? It's not a bad thing to lighten the load. Let's keep on going here. I like this right here. Help me out, Tim. Thank you, bud. 1 Corinthians 12, 12 says this. The body is a unit, though it is composed of many parts. And although its parts are many, they all form one body. So it is with Christ. Everybody's got different gifts. And you know, if you read that chapter, it talks about, you know, it talks about the eye and the ear and the this and that. Everybody's got their gifts and everything like that. Why am I mad at somebody if they're an ear and they can't grab something? Why am I mad at somebody if they're, they're part of the body, they're an eye and they're not, they don't hear what I'm saying? The whole thing is, we've got to work in unity. There is power in unity. I said this a long time ago. I, I say like churches that spokes in a wheel for Jesus. Each one of those spokes on a bicycle wheel, if you think about it, has a job to keep that thing turning. But they're all tied into the centerpiece. That would be Christ. Right? And then if you go a little bit further and you think about the inner tomb stuff, I think about I think about the Holy Ghost. I'm thinking about, you know, the air in that, the power in that. We're rolling with that. And we kind of float along with that. What happens? When a couple of those spokes get a little out of whack, things starts going like this, right? Do we keep loading it up? Just put more air in it. Let's do this. No. We need to go back. My dad was great at this. I would tear my bicycle up, and he had this little spoke wrench. I don't know what this is. A little spoke wrench. And he'd sit back there, chewing tobacco, flip my bicycle upside down, put it on top of the picnic table because we didn't have a garage till I left. I think he waited purposely for that. And he would move that thing, and my wheel would go like this. And my dad would take time, and he'd do this, and he'd just want to loosen one. And he'd just want to loosen one. Just want to loosen one. And he'd take, I mean, it would take a lot of time, and I'm like, come on, Dad, everybody's leaving. It's close enough, Dad. I can hear myself. He says, I'm just trying to get this right. Right? 
And he'd get that wheel from going like this to just right back like that. It was in the Father's hand. He was making the adjustments. See, we need to be in the Father's hands so he can make the adjustment. If not, we're running down the road like this. Right? It's crazy. We want everything now. But there was a season that Dad had to take, make some adjustments. There's a season that our Heavenly Father has to help us with some adjustments. If not, the tire's going to wear funny. It's going to be dangerous. You're not going to get the far as you need to go in this life. We need to turn around and come sit at the feet of the Father. Lord, help me to identify what you want in my life. Lord, help me to understand the beauty and the power of unity in the body of Christ. Everybody doing good? This right here is the biggest lie that I think I've ever heard. I talk to people, some of them, well, you know, what do you think God's called you to do? And they say, oh, I don't really make a difference. No, you do make a difference. Well, I don't do this. and I, don't, I ain't talking about what you don't do. I'm talking about who you are and whose you are. That's the biggest lie. It's a cop-out. Don't ever buy the lie that the devil says that you're not worth it. Just point him to the cross. Jesus says you are. Look at that. We would be so much further in life if we kept our eyes on the Lord and stop looking side to side about what everybody else is doing, what everybody else has, what they can do, all those things. It doesn't, it, that doesn't matter. Because when you get there and we stand before the Lord, you know what? He ain't going to say, hey, bud, yes, Lord. What do you think about Bill Jones? He's a great neighbor. I don't think that's going to happen like that. He's going to look at my life. Buddy, how did you use the gifts that I entrusted to you? In those seasons of your life, when, when I was willing to help you, you stiff-armed me out of your life. And so I had to leave you in that spot longer because you didn't understand the boundaries that I had set on your life. When we set boundaries on, on things, as a parent, do we do that for harm or help? We do it for help, right? God has boundaries in his word for a blessing. He doesn't say, well, go get married 48 times and do this and do that and drink and do this. No, he says that's not a good thing. Why? Because it's not a good thing, <laughs> right? He, he takes those, those times and says, look, if you would just walk according to my will, that doesn't mean you're never going to have a problem. But I'm going to tell you what, it's going to minimize a lot of the stuff you go through. And it's going to show us as we go through there that God says, you know what, you are a difference maker. God, in your current situation, understand this. Don't look at boundaries as a bad thing. Look at boundaries as a good thing. And God wants you to walk within those things. We're free. We're free to do what we want. But we really should look at it. We're free to do what God wants us to do. You hear what I'm saying? There's a difference. He came and rescued us out of the shackles of sin and set us in the family for times such as this, so that we would be effective and efficient for the things of God to bring him glory, not us. That's what the, the whole picture is. So many times I think back, do you ever think back in your life and go, what was I thinking? You know, before I got saved, I was thinking about stuff. Stuff, man, I'm going to buy a bigger house, I'm going to get a faster car, I'm going to get a deeper swimming pool, all that stuff. And now I'm thinking, Lord, what do you have me to do today? Lord, what, would you, what, what do you want me to do today? You want me to buy the guy's groceries? You want me to do this? You want, you want me to be quiet? That could be a big part. That could be. <laughs> I, love, I love it. It gets real over here. I know James has been about 10 years old. He said, boy, we got a problem there. <laughs> I love you, brother. I love it. Oh, yeah. But you know, that, that's true. I would probably have a problem with that. But you know what God was, God has taught me, you'd have been better off not saying that. I'm so thankful. Mean, let me tell you, if I ain't told you, I love y'all. I love our church, man. I just do. It's, it's, it's awesome. It's awesome. Amen. Here you go. I'm going to move this right here. I said, play your part with all you, all you got. Play your part with all your heart. When God sets you in this family, this church family, if you feel like this is where you are, then, then, then show up. Then serve. 
then pray, then give, then invite, whatever that part is. Because let me tell you what, this is what the deal is. Marie was praying this morning, Lord, help us to be strong, a strong body of Christ for you. To reflect your glory. We want people to know what's, up, what's going on over there, right? Not just to talk about it, but to see Christ lived out in our crisis. To see Christ lived out in our giving. To see Christ lived out on the way that we deal with folks. And I just told you, man, it, it's a daily thing. It's a daily thing. But if we start stepping over and stepping over and stepping over, and then we wonder, wow, how come God's not talking no more? It's not that he's not talking. I think it's that I'm not listening. I got bad enough here now already. I need to be listening to the things of God. But isn't it amazing when God speaks? It doesn't have to be loud. You know that it's him. That small, still voice is like, look, this is what I have for you to do. And then we start giving him all the tests. Well, if you really want me to do that, why not, what would happen if we just did what God asked us to do? My buddy's not here today, but he doesn't, he doesn't miss too many times. And we got a sign that we put out front. It's out there now. And when he's here, he's the one that always takes that sign out there. Donald takes that sign out there. That's his thing, right? And, and so he said, that's my sign, man. I said, well, you know, I appreciate what you do. He said, no, you don't understand. He said, do you know how many times I rode by here? He said, I never even saw the sign of the church up front, which is three times bigger. He said, I saw that sign. And God used that sign to bring me in here. That's cool. So, so think about this. I'm telling you, when he comes in here, he'll say, hey, how y'all doing? Calls everybody by name, and then he gets that sign, man. And he takes that sign and puts it out there because he knows the power of God working in that situation. That's what God used to say, come on. Come on. Maybe it's not a sign. Maybe it's an invite from you. Maybe you're sharing a message on Facebook, and somebody says, hey, you know, that guy was speaking to what's going on in my life. Hey, you know what? I, I, I think that God would use me some way. I think that, you know what? I really do make a difference. You do. Never let somebody tell you you don't matter. That is the biggest lie. And you know what happens is so many times we start believing that lie. I'm going to tell you what. Isn't it easier for you just to believe that God loves you? Because you got the proof. You got the cross. You got the word. You got the Holy Spirit. Right? You got a church family that's going to remind you of the love of God. But you know what? We got to plug in. We got to keep moving forward. Everybody doing good so far? Because I know I'm having a good time sharing some Jesus up in here. Let's do it. My last point is we need to choose our path. There's choices every day. Choices every day. Look at this. Ephesians 5.15. It says, so be careful how you live. Amen. Don't live like fools. I did that. But like those who are wise, I'm working on that. Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Are the days evil out there? I think it's pretty rough, right? Look at this. Don't act thoughtfully less. I can't even say that. You can say it that way if you want. <laughs> but, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. I told you, this is what you get. Hey, I, got, I was on the honor roll. I only had two classes. But, but I, I made it, man. Look at this. We need to watch our walk. Man, because you know what? Everybody else is. Everybody's watching your walk because they want to see, do you really believe what you believe? We need to take note and realize the time that God's put before us. And I, I, I'm not just saying this because this is where we are and probably people that preach 200 years before me were probably saying, man, I'm going to tell you what, there is a urgency about this hour that we are in now. There is a urgency. I have never seen it in so much change in so little of time in my life. How about you guys? I mean, I, I know there's a lot of different things going on. I mean, look, looking since 2019 to where we are now, three years, there's a lot of changes, man. Do you mask on, mask up, shoot up, shoot down? I don't know. What are you doing? What are you doing? I mean, you, you, what are we doing? Are we fist bumping or are we shaking? That drives me crazy. You go, hey, man, what's up? Hey, the guy's doing this stuff right here. It's like a cobra. Just <laughs> give him a shake my hand. Dude, just hug me. It's crazy, man. So many changes. But you got to watch your walk. 
Because I want my walk to represent God. And some days are better than others. But I want you to realize this. When we do miss it, turn away from that sin. And just say, Lord, I need some help in this area. Lord, I got a real short fuse. I need some help. Lord, help, help me in this area. You know? And you watch. God will allow Holy Spirit to work with you. Let's take a look at this. Let the Lord set the pace. I'm going to go back to the dog analogy. I'm sorry, y'all just had to get used to it. Tanya said, that dog is just like you. Got to be wide open. And I got to say, I mean, I like to take, when it's get ready to go, I say, hey, man, let's go. I'm ready to go. And I think about that. Is this what I do? Because, man, I'm like, woo, come on now. We're going. We're going on there. Everybody say, hey, how you doing? Going, Everything's good. It's great. It's fine. It's good. Like, yeah, that's good. Yeah, all right, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's my new dog. Hey, I'll check you next time. Next lap. Hey, how y'all doing? <laughs> but what would happen if we allowed God to set the pace? Because I know we miss a lot of things when we're rolling by. What happens if I took a step back? So, God, what is it that you want me to do today? Anybody busy in here? We get busy, don't we? But you don't say I'm busy. You got to do it like this. I'm so busy. You got to throw it. Get I'm busy. Your whole face gets twisted up. Hey, what are you doing? I'm busy. It don't even sound fun. It don't even look fun. What happens if we just say, hey, I've got a few things going. What you got going? I wonder how many things I miss out because I'm so busy. Busy doesn't make you better. Busy can keep you things from the best thing that God has for you. I'm learning that. I'm being very transparent with you. That's, 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 that's what I'm learning right there, is that sometimes i got to pump the brake. Sometimes i got to say, man, Lord, what is it that you have for me? Let's look at this. What is God saying to you today? Right? What is he, what is he saying to you today? What's, what's the deal? What's the whole goal of what we're doing? Oh, we get going, and we don't even realize how important fellowship is do we? we really don't sometimes and I saw something the other day made me really think about it I want to share that with you see we need to be about the things of God man we on fire for the things of God stop drop and roll right we get out there we're ready we're ready to go hey let's go show me the way I'm going I'm on fire for the Lord I'm on fire for the Lord I'm on fire for the Lord I'm ready to go I'm ready to go I'm ready to see what's going on what happens, though, when a situation comes up like this and uh, in the midst of all that, didn't get the promotion, didn't meet the girl that you, the queen of your dreams, didn't get to well, fill in the blank. All these things start happening. And you just said, man, I'm done. I'm done. And you pull back out of church, and you pull back away from the things of God. And you say, see, it just doesn't work. It just doesn't work. And then you reach in here, and you go, hey, man, well, you, you know, I, 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 I could do it myself. You can't do it yourself. God's made us and created us to work together. And when we come together, he keeps us rolling. The power of God. And you said, well, well, that's cool. I'll go back. I'll do it again. I'm doing all I can. But I'm going to tell you what. When we get on fire for the things of God, and we get around people that are, are, are on fire for God, and we get around people that are reading the word, and we're spending time with God, and we're doing this, and we come over and say, man, I need some of this. Are we willing to share the fire that God's got in our hearts to be difference makers? Hey, man, we can get overdosed. It can rain on your parade. And it's hard sometimes to find that spark back inside. But just like that demonstration right there, when we come back and we realize that that season right there, I need my church family. I need to be close to God. Because if I want to turn around and I want to be a delight to anybody else, 
I got to stay close to the fire at hand. And let me tell you what. God is always willing to relight and rekindle the fire of that relationship. You got to be close enough for it to start to flame. Everybody said amen. amen. Father, we love you. We praise you, Lord. There is a season that we're in now that, that just makes us shake our head and go, Lord, what is it that you want us to do? Some of us in a season that we're just so busy, we just don't, we can't take one more thing on. Some of us in a season of loss. Some of us are in a season of, of, of just dismay. Some of us in a season, man, it's going really good, but we won't enjoy it because we're afraid the other shoe's going to fall. Well, regardless of the season we're in, let us know that we can always come back to you no matter how much rain has been on our parade, no matter how many things have washed away, you're still willing and you're still able to feed that fire to burn in that relationship, to kindle that relationship so that we shine bright for the kingdom of God. Let us pray. Father, I thank you today that we can never get too far from you, but Lord, it sure is nice to be close to you. Lord, help us in this season, whatever season it is my brothers and sisters are walking in, whatever season that may change tomorrow, help us to realize that we need to understand the season we're in so that we can walk it out to the pace and to the place that you have us. Lord, help us not to take on more than what we should and try to do it our way, but for us to stay in step with you through the power of the Holy Spirit. And Lord, I ask you to help us today to understand that what we have is a gift and to understand it wasn't cheap. Our sin separated us from God. We sinned against a holy God. The Bible's very clear. It says, all of sin and fall short of the glory of God. That means that, you know what? We were all in over our head just like that lighter. And there's no way we're going to be able to spark that thing again on our own. But through the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, and us aligning our life with that, turning from our sin, and coming to him and putting our faith and trust in the finished work of the cross, he is a risen Savior. And when we ask God, Lord, Rekindle that fire. Lord, help me to walk this out. Lord, forgive me of my sin. Lord, I'm turning from my sin. I'm coming to you. The Bible says that he will take us right where we are and put us in the family of God and seal us forever. It's by grace we've been saved through faith, not of ourselves, but as a gift to God. Stay close to the Lord. Rekindle that fire because God is for you in every season of your life. And everybody said, amen. Give the Lord a hand clap. Share the message. All righty.